All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I was asked recently to update you guys on the high density fig plantings that I've been experimenting with uh, here in the Philadelphia area, zone seven. I have about 120 different fig trees uh, planted in the ground. And this experiment started, I think about seven-ish years ago, uh, where we decided to plant fig trees two foot on center. Um, and in fact, we have about five different plots here on the property. Uh, this plot here behind me has about 35 to 40 fig trees in it that we're gonna look at today. This is on the west side. This is one of the two plots on the west side of the property. We also have one on the south side, the north side, and the east side. Um, so we have five plots in total. This one here though has been, I think it's the most advanced um, and so I'm going to show you guys this one because the one that is the most advanced obviously has the largest trees. And when you have planting uh, or fig trees that close together, um, it can be really tricky to grow them so close together for such a long period of time. So some of the trees in here, even though we started about seven or eight years ago with this experiment, some of the trees in here, actually all of them, we originally were planning on cutting them really far back every season so they would grow six seven eight nine ten feet in one season and then at the end of the year i would take all those cuttings and prune them really far back to about six to twelve inches and that was a great plan for a while i mean obviously i had a lot of wood and i could sell a lot of cuttings but the trees were not very productive that way and so i would highly recommend anybody that's in like a zone five or six and that's your strategy for uh, winter protection or that's your winter strategy would not recommend doing that at all um, you can of course I think at this point I could chop the trees really far back if I wanted to and restart the form and make the trees a bit smaller and more compact and that would work and I think they would fruit the following year after pruning them but generally a hard prune like that is going to result in a lot of fig trees the majority of the ones I have here they'll produce almost no fruit the next year so it's really about the hormones. I thought it was about light or sunlight, um, but it's really, I think, all in the hormones. And when you hack your trees back like that, uh, you just really don't get the fruit set that you want. Um, so you have to have some kind of base to your tree that's gonna keep the hormones at least uh, in a heightened state so that you can have them in this right balance. But if you're constantly pruning them back every year, it's just gonna be really difficult to get the fruit set that you want. Your fruits will also be later, uh, you'll have less fruits, and the fruits will even be a lower quality. There's a huge uh, difference in quality, believe it or not. The one benefit is that your fruits will actually be larger. So that's maybe a benefit for, for some people. But um, some of the trees in here now, I would say maybe about 75% of them are now entering their third or fourth growing season, having survived the winter with very minimal damage. Uh, I think some might be in here in their fifth season, uh, but certainly what that means is they're getting a, an established form and I don't have to, I'm not cutting them really far back anymore. And so they're taking up a lot of space. And so when we gave the tour of all the fig trees here on the property or a lot of the fig trees, this was obviously someone's thought, well, Ross, how are you managing all these trees in such a small space? So again, they're two foot on center. Uh, we have nine, um, I would say there's five rows. If you think about it going back towards the house, up to five rows, and it goes across uh, nine plantings or nine trees. So it's easy to, to deal with them right here. Right, I'm on the outside of the, of the planting, at the outside of the plot. But when then I get into the plot, it's very difficult to kind of organize myself, walk around, harvest some of the fruits. Um, now, I'm not complaining at all. I did this to myself, but if you're not somebody who needs to have hundreds of varieties and is someone like myself who's trialing hundreds of varieties, uh, you don't, you don't need to do this. And that's the main message I think. People ask me all the time, Ross, what do you recommend, Where, how far apart do you recommend spacing your fig trees when you plant them? The answer is I think you gotta go at least four to six, four to six feet away, excuse me. 
Um, two feet is definitely too close, but it's doable and I'm making it work and I will continue to make it work, but you have to really know pruning. You have to know how the trees will be affected by the pruning that you're doing. And you also have to be able to train the trees, stake the branches, use limb spreaders, limb bending, uh, you know, every little trick and tool in your arsenal that we talk about here on this channel to be able to make this work. Again, it's possible. I, I'm not going to say it's not. Um, and I also think it's, it's kind of nice actually having just a giant mat essentially of, of fig trees. Uh, so it's almost like if you want to do this and you want to have a higher density planting, even four feet is a higher dense planting. Most growers uh, commercially will not plant them that close together. That's a little bit absurd. Um, and so, you know, I, I think when you, when you have them that close, basically you can just think of this, this whole plot here as one tree and one living organism and that there's all these other trees in it, but it just is one giant thing. And if you can manage all the little pieces in that one thing, it, it makes a lot of sense and it's easier to, um, to manage. But at some point here, I will have to do some more heavy duty pruning to these trees to make sure that some of them are not getting too far away from the others. And, and some of them are being kept in check. And I don't mind doing that. I know how to control these trees. And it's really as simple as if we wanna reduce the height of some of these trees, we have to bring back the scaffolds or prune out some of the trunks. Actually, every tree in here is, a, is the tree form. It's not a bush form. And so that's just not necessarily my preferred way of growing fig trees. I do, I do actually prefer a bush, growing them as a bush, like this Ron de Bordeaux here, or this little ruby tree uh, that's in the shape of a bush. Um, and that's because I live in a colder place. I've talked about that, the differences between a bush and a tree. And if you want to have a tree, you just have to come in here at the base of every tree and remove all the suckers. Just keep the one shoot. But for me, I have one shoot because I like to harvest the suckers, propagate them through air layer, or I will let the cuttings or the suckers grow, excuse me. And the, the suckers will grow rather large by the end of the season and uh, they'll get to about six or seven, maybe even eight feet, depending on the variety. And I'll harvest those and sell them as cuttings. Every foot is one cutting that I sell every November uh, through January. Um, so for me, it's, um, this plot's doing two things at once. I'm getting a harvest and I'm getting suckers and prunings and cuttings uh, that way. Um, now, one thing I think people really love to question when they think about this or doing something like this they're like well aren't the trees gonna compete for nutrients aren't the trees gonna not do well because they're so close together and yada 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 I have just not found that to be the case at all nutrient wise if anything there's a competition for sunlight and some of the trees do get a, a far away from the others simply because either some of them never took off the way that they should have, they were just not planted properly, or they weren't at the right size when I planted them. Uh, there was definitely varying degrees of sizes. Uh, I planted some that were in 10 gallon pots or 15 gallon pots right in the ground, whereas others were in one gallon pots. And so some of the trees have obviously taken off much better than others. I just actually planted a couple new ones in here. So I'm actually adding to this plot. <laughs> I have thought about expanding it um, a little bit further and adding another row, but generally um, I don't really have to worry about nutrients. Now I do have a really heavy clay soil that's typically higher in nutrients than maybe what you guys have. Um, and so if I lived in a really sandy dry soil with very minimal amounts of nutrients, I would start to be a little bit concerned, but um, at the end of the day, no matter where you live, I think it's a really good idea, if you're gonna be doing this, is to add lots of mulch. And that mulch will break down, 
It'll add nutrients, it'll add life to your soil, it'll change the, the texture of your soil. And you won't really have to worry about the competition aspect of, of nutrients. It, the, the wood chips, you would not believe how beneficial it is for woody perennials. And um, so I haven't had a problem with that. The only real problem is the competition for sunlight. And, and being able to manage this, having the expertise to do so, and also being able to harvest. Uh, and uh, now I'm getting to the point where a tree like this, I'm having a hard time reaching for the fruits. I'm gonna have to, at some point, maybe even get a ladder for this. Um, there is a tree over here, Green Michurinska, which again, I can just pull the branches down. But if you imagine this Green Michurinska here, it's almost at the point where it's like this Rosianca persimmon next to it. And I definitely need a ladder for that. I can't harvest all the fruits on this Rosianca persimmon. It's just too big. So we're, we're not quite there yet, but maybe at the end of this season, I will be with this tree. And I won't be able to come in here and, uh, and do that. And getting a ladder in here will be impossible. Uh, or near impossible. So um, not to worry about it though, I just have to do some thinning cuts, uh, reducing the height, recycling some of that wood around where the scaffolds form, cut out a scaffold or two, a new scaffold comes up in its place. So um, yeah, now I have actually a way of getting cuttings as well, not just from the suckers, but now I can harvest cuttings from higher points on the tree, which also is, um, you know, a nice benefit. Um, so in general, like I said, I think those are really the pros and cons of what we talked about with this high dense planting. Again, they're two foot on center. I would not recommend planting them unless you are really have the expertise and the desire to do this and you don't have a lot of room. Why I did this is that I don't have a whole lot of room. Yes, there's a lot of grass around here, but this is not my property and I did not have the freedom to do everything I wanted. If I did, uh, I, would, I wouldn't have grass. There wouldn't be grass here. It would be covered with fruit trees and fruiting plants and fig trees. Um, so yeah, if you're one of those people, then be my guest, but it's not for everybody. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button and uh, check out my blog, figboss.com. Catch you guys for the next video. Take care.